and welcome to my review of Haikyuu chapter 230, their respective nights. See, I should really remember these things, but chapter is more important. Um, another quite transitioning chapter because we're still like in between what's happening, but it was good. It was enjoyable, it was funny, and it... I don't, I'm not gonna say it filled out a lot of blanks, but it was definitely a lot of things that were needed in terms of just whatever. So, um, we have Karasuno getting to Tokyo, and they get to the uh, Ryokan, or whatever it was called, like, the place they're gonna be stay staying at, which is low budget and kind of run down compared to the nice hotel that is literally beside them. But they seem to be doing alright because they're not really used to all of the luxurious things and stuff like that. But I, I found it really sweet how they all reacted to them kind of wanting to explore and stuff like that. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it was really nice. And we had that really sweet thing with Ukai having had his... Um, um, having had that other guy, Ma, Ma ba, 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 something. Um, See, so yeah, I should remember their names. Um, Having made the My Epic video where he just put in all of the great plays that Karasuna has ever made and have them watch that because that's really a good confidence boost because we had we did see like Asahi, Hinata and Hitoka being really nervous because it's the national stage and their their nerves are just not that the best. Um, so it's really good boosting their confidence like that because it is a different experience seeing yourself play. It's kind of like that out of body experience because when you're on the stage I'm like I imagine it m must be so weird because I remember when I did competitive swimming swimming you kind of like you're very focused on what you do and you don't really like you're not completely aware of what you're doing because you're co so concentrated and when you like hit that finish line uh, and when everything is over you're just kind of like okay I did it but I don't really know like I can see the results but I don't really know how I did and how well everything went because I was so inside my head and trying to just like focus so being able to see how you did afterwards is like really really good because if you did well you can be like oh I did really well and if you actually do something wrong like they wouldn't see that because this is a compilation of their epic plays but in my case if you did something wrong you could see on video okay I did this and I can improve this way because it's very different how you think you're moving and how you're actually moving and especially for like a person like Asahi it must just be so weird because he'd look at himself doing something really cool and he'd be like, whoa, is that really me? So yeah, that's really nice. We also have um, Kageyama and Hinata going on a run and then Tsukishima kind of biking after them. And I find it really interesting that we don't really get to see that because they are now in a city where there are so many different volleyball players just scattered around. And I imagine that they wouldn't be the only people out for a run. And we know that Hinata has this gift of always bumping into people, like he's, he doesn't usually in the bathroom, but he and Kagama have uh, bumped into Ushiwaka when they were out for a run. So I imagine that we are at some point going to see a flashback of whoever they bumped into. Um, and it's going to be really funny because Tsukishima is also there and he's just so snarky. <laughs> so I'd really love for, to see if they met anyone on that run because I feel like it's it, it's so weird for them to have put that in if they weren't gonna meet anyone or nothing would have happened. Also, I really appreciated the bath scene with Hitoka and Kyoko. Oh my god, you have no idea how excited I was about that. Like, I was like Tanaka level hyped for this scene and like the conversation they were having was so sweet and I, I've i always wanted to know what Kyoko did before she became the volleyball manager because she said she used to do sports, we just didn't know what she did. And I guess tennis because that was like the first thing that came to mind, I've just stuck with that. But now we find out she did track and field and she wears her tights because she used to be really good at hurdles but she fell over a lot and got bruises. And I think that's really sweet because I'm like that really adds to her character that she did that. and. I just, I really, really like her and she's she's just so nice and I just, oh my god, she's so adorable, I can't with her. Oh. But yeah, I just, it's gonna be really sad when the third years leave, especially because one of the things that really struck me about what Kyoko said was that she'd never, she's such really awkward, she'd never had like a real good, uh, like, relationship with... Kohai or someone like with her because she's always been like a manager 
the only manager there, she never had on anyone under her or above her, I guess. Um, and now she has Hitoka, who she got like halfway through the year or like a few months in. And she's gonna have to leave whenever they lose because, it, and even if they didn't lose, even if they went like won, then she would still have to leave after this because that's still the end. There's nothing more after that. And I just, I think that's really, that's sweet, but it's like really sad as well because he finally like got that person that she could talk to, that girlfriend. And now she has to leave, right? I, yeah, but I really love Kyogo because she's she's come really far, like her character development, if I can call it that, is like really subtle because she was so quiet and shy in the beginning. And while she is still that, she's a lot more open and she talks a lot more because, um, yeah, well, I guess she's more confident, but I think Hitoka being there is just a uh, really good influence because she babbles a lot and she's very easy to be around, I feel like, so that's really nice to see. Okay, so jumping to the end here, we have, it's finally January the 5th and the tournament is like about to start and we have these two amazing double spread pages which is just really nice. And like, just fun fact, the big thing in the background, like the big uh, thing that does this, uh, like toy thing, is the thing that Hinata has a shirt of that his little sister is a big fan of, so I just thought that was really funny because I don't know if that's a real Japanese thing or it's something that is a parody of something or the author has made himself, but I, I just think that's a really funny touch that it's always there in the different tournaments. But either way, um, it's like this really, really big thing, and we find out that volleyball, this, this volleyball tournament is just really, really big in Japan. And we have all these players like going around, and then by the end, we meet Nekoma again. Um, I feel like it was half insinuated that they were gonna be their first opponents, which I do not believe. I definitely think that they're not our first opponents, they just met them. Because obviously they'd be there, and they're friends and stuff like that, and I bet you anything that Nekoma was looking for people in black uh, uniforms because they were looking for them, um, but I definitely think that we're gonna, I, I, I'm a little annoyed that we haven't found out who the, found out who their first opponent is yet, because it's been seized for a couple of chapters now, but it depends, like, because if their first opponent isn't someone we know or have a great or big connection with, it doesn't really matter, um, but it's not gonna be Nekoma, it's definitely not gonna be Nekoma too early, um, I mean, even if they were gonna face them early, I'd say at the, like, the soonest, the soonest, uh, uh, I want to see them is in the second match, like not the first one because I still believe that they're gonna face Nekoma and then they're gonna lose to Nekoma and I don't want them to lose the first match, so, uh, but that's besides the point. But with meeting Nekoma, we kind of, like, we start the arc, like really start the arc, we stop being transitional and even if the next chapter is just gonna be them talking, them meeting some other people and could have been like, you need to watch out for these players and blah blah blah. I still think that this is really kicking the arc off because now we're at the day <laughs> the tournament starts and we're surrounded by all of these players. And it's just, it's gonna be really interesting because um, I haven't been reviewing the series um, when we've been in official matches. Because, yeah, I started reading the series um, just when they started playing Shira Torizawa. Or maybe by the end of the Seijo, second Seijo match. Um, I don't remember, but I, I remember I was reading the Shiratori Sama match and I remember it being so long compared to everything else because like, it was just such a long match and it took forever to get through it, even though it was really good. But yeah, this is gonna be the first time I review official matches where there's something at stake. Um, so that's gonna be really interesting for me at the very least, I don't know about you. Um, but yeah. I feel like that's ultimately what I have to say about this chapter because in general it was just really funny. We had a lot of funny character moments and then we kind of set off the arc so there's not really all that much to talk about even though I still feel like this video might be a little long but you know, uh, I do long videos. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna end off here. I think I got my general thoughts out. Um, if you like anything that I had to say, please leave a thumbs up on the video. Leave me in the comments below what you thought of this chapter and any other thoughts you have until we get into next week's chapter and if you want to see more of me you can subscribe and until next time bye